Buddha actually prophesied the coming of a savior after him. This has never been translated. It is in the Pratipidok. In many Buddhist temples, this passage of the Pratipidok is being ripped out of the sacred text. However, there is a Wat. A Wat is a temple in Chiang Mai called Wat Sing, where parts of the Pratipidok are not written on paper; they're written on the walls of the temple, so they can do nothing but keep it there. Because they can't desecrate it, and on this wall is this story of Buddha predicting Tam Nai, the coming of Jesus Christ. Listen and see if it sounds familiar. This is found in Kampi Kham. Actually, that means the Cambodian scroll or the Khmer scroll. So we have the Cambodians to to thank for preserving this text for us. When Buddha was traveling in this life and in this world, an old pram. Pram is a Brahmin priest, okay? One of the Hindu priests. I'm just going to use the Thai word. An old Pram, dressed in white, came to ask Buddha, "How can a human or a priest follow all the commandments and escape from all his sins?" Buddha replied, "Listen to this. Even if you gave alms to the poor, donated gifts to the monks, keep all the commandments until sin five, sin eight." Sin ten, sin two hundred and twenty-seven, even up to ninety-nine million. Even if you lifted up your hands and worshipped and offered yourself as a burnt offering and prayed five times a day, you still cannot save yourself from your sins. If you did this every day, your good deed will be worth no more than a strain of baby hair that is still in its mother's womb for eight months, not even delivered. It is not even good enough to get close to the gates of heaven. Whoa! Your good deeds, no matter how much you do, is worth so little. Sins cannot just be washed away, like forgiven without any price. All right, but let's continue because the old pram obviously was startled by Buddha's answer, and he pressed in. The old pram continued to ask, "If this is so, what must we do to escape?" And be safe from sins. Buddha replied, "The sins of humanity are many and heavy. It's heavier than the sky and thicker than the earth. It's thicker than a large granite stone used for burial, one foot thick on every side. Imagine if an angel came down from heaven and gave this stone a sweep with a cloth once a year. The day that this stone completely erodes away is the day that man's sins and karma will disappear." Did you get the picture? Got a large granite stone. Give it one sweep per year. If that stone would disappear through that one sweep, the day that it disappears, your sins would disappear. Buddha continued saying, "I myself have left all my princely inheritance, abandoned lust, and became a monk. I esteem that my good deeds are not few. I hold on to all eight commandments, even up to a hundred thousand." If I could do this and give away everything I have for ten lives, yet I still cannot get over one of my sins. Buddha understood the problem of sin. He found the problem in his spirit, and he simply tried to explain it in his own words to the people living at that time. Let's keep going. The same prom continued to press on. If this be the case, what must I do to get over all my sins? Buddha told him and replied. Let all of you do a good deed and seek for another holy one who will come to save the world. He will rescue you in the near future. The old pram asked, "This holy one who will come to rescue the world in the near future, what does he look like?" It's just like an Asian question. I can imagine Asians asking this. You say, "There's a savior coming. Hey, what does he look like? Long hair, short hair? Is he fat or skinny? Is he tall or short?" Such an awesome story. Buddha replied, "The Holy One who will rescue the world in the near future will have scars in his hands and scars in his feet, like the shape of a sharp cutting wheel. It's called a gongjak. It's an ancient weapon. In his side, there is a stab wound. His forehead is full of blemish and scars. The holy person will be like a golden vessel and a very large one that will carry you across the cycle of suffering until you pass over into heaven nippon. Then he says, "Watch this. Do not pursue the old way. 
you will certainly not escape. Turn from your old ways, and you will have a new spirit that shines like a light bug. Come down from heaven above and dwelling in your hearts, and you will be given victory over all your enemies, whether they come against you from four directions or eight directions. Nobody will by any means harm you, and when you die, you will not come back to this world again. Oh my my my! Is it time for this message to go to all the world? I believe this is the first time this has been translated. I think Buddha. Saw Jesus Christ, but I'm just saying that the likelihood of a man being able to describe someone with this description without revelation from God is almost zero. And in the Old Testament, there were many people who saw Jesus Christ appear. If you don't know that, you need to do an Old Testament study. Abraham met Jesus face to face. Jacob. Met Jesus, Manoah, Samson's father, met Jesus Christ. Nebuchadnezzar met Jesus Christ. He says, "Who is that in the burning oven? The fourth one. Who's that fourth man? He looks like the Son of God. He saw Jesus Christ before Jesus was born. Jesus was not a human. He is God come in the flesh. He has always existed. He is the eternal one. And there's a man that was searching God named Siddhartha Gautama." Searching for a way to escape sin, saw Jesus Christ either in a vision or in a dream, and he described it the best way he could. He said, "It's like the holes of an ancient weapon in his hands and feet. This weapon would tear your flesh apart. It's a spinning wheel with very jagged edges." He says, "I see the shape of this gongjak in his hands and in his feet." Now, if I may close with this scripture in John chapter 21, I don't want to lead you. Into my opinion, I want you to compare what Buddha said to the scriptures and see it for yourself. All right, don't accept what I say. You be the judge for yourself. Who Buddha might have been referring to, in John chapter twenty, verse nineteen. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them. Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, "Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you." And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, "Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained." Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And other disciples therefore said to him, "We have seen the Lord." So he said unto them, "Unless I see his hands, in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe." After eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with him. And Jesus came, and the doors being shut, he stood in the midst and said, "Peace to you, shalom." Then he said to Thomas, "Reach." Your finger here, and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, "My Lord and my God." Jesus is God. He's not just a great prophet. Thomas recognized he is God, and Jesus said to him, "Thomas." Because you have seen me, you believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet believed. There are many people who have not seen Jesus physically face to face, but they believed in him. They did not have to put their fingers into the nail print of his hand, but they have put their trust in him. And Jesus says, "You are more blessed when you believe without seeing." Is it possible that Buddha? In his search, saw an image of Jesus Christ, a vision of Jesus Christ, and at that moment he put his trust in that Savior, and he even told his disciples, "Do not believe in me. Don't follow your old ways. Don't do that. You will not escape. Follow the new way, and what will happen? The words are amazing, just like Ezekiel and Jeremiah said. By the way, you have to do your own study." But he said, "You will be given a new spirit that shines like a light bug. 
You take a look at Jeremiah and Ezekiel, and they say the same thing: that when you put your trust in the Savior, God will reach out and He will take your old heart of stone. He will give you a new heart. He'll write He'll write His laws into your mind and into your heart. He'll give you a new spirit. And the amazing thing is, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Buddha were all living in the same time. I found this to be true that when God gives me a message in this church, many many pastors get the same message. Now I think this one might be the exception because the Lord is using us to get this message out concerning Buddhism. But often I don't come up with a unique message. Many other pastors around Australia and around the world hear the same thing at the same time because it's the Spirit of God. That's how I know there's a Holy Spirit. I know for sure. Amen. But when I look back in history and I think Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Buddha, they all lived around 500 BC, and they all got this word. God says, "Don't follow the old rules. Follow the Savior, and He'll put a new spirit in you." I think, wow, that's amazing. A bunch of people all around the world could have picked that up in their heart, who were searching God. But only Jesus' blood can wash away our sins. That's why we got to run to Him and put our trust in Him.